Hello friends, welcome to the Butterfly Path. My name is Lucia Radetsky and I'm a Christian health coach. And today I'm going to be addressing um, our love life. I'm going to be talking about the kingdom spouse, the counterfeit, and how to tell the difference based on scripture. So as you can see, I have around 17 <laughs> references. Um, I don't think it's going to fit all in a video, but we'll do as much as we can and I'm coming up with this video because I have seen many prophets and prophetic words out there um, trying to encourage people to wait and wait and pray and wait and yes I do believe that we are meant to wait and one of the most important disclaimers in my channel is that um, as our Lord say that it is desire more mercy than condemnation we're not here to condemn anyone and yes we can pray for people to be healed to be restored and, and to come into the lord but at the same time we need to be able to identify when it is a tactic to keep you bound to sin so we're coming today with the sword of the holy ghost against the counterfeit and the sword is um, the scripture so we're gonna be trying to really spot on some light about it because marriage has a purpose and in particular, marriage for the saints has a very important purpose. What I was learning from scripture is that truly marriage for, for the person that has sexual desire, it is key. It is key for many reasons. And so today we're going to be looking at some of them. And we're going to be looking at your kingdom spouse, what qualities he will have and what qualities he will not have. Right. And so. Yes, you can pray and wait on the Lord for the Lord to change someone. But at the same time, maybe you're waiting on the on the wrong guy. OK, and maybe you are misunderstanding God's worth, uh, God's words for the words of a prophet or for the words of even the devil who is telling you in your mind that that prophetic word is talking about someone that is not the person. So what happens here is that you can be end up marrying someone that is not your reef. You can be marrying someone that is not the one that the Lord has appointed for you. So today we're going to go through these very important scripture references to see what it means to be with the real deal, you know, and how to spot the counterfeit because our job with the counterfeit is to pray that the Lord cut them off, not to pray that the Lord will change them for years and years. And yes, there are some testimonies of people that have prayed for the um, salvation of someone. And if it's the case that you cannot think at all about any other person and it's the case that the Lord has indeed speak to you, I'm not coming against it. I'm not telling you what to think, but I am giving you some references. So when you pray for this person, um, if you believe that this is your person, you know what you need to pray about. You know that you cannot accept or tolerate um, mistreatment or ghosting or third parties or things like that. They do not belong to the kingdom. They're not based on scripture and they're not going to take you to fulfill the purpose that a kingdom marriage has. So if you believe that this is the person for you, then I encourage you to pray based on scripture to what is according to what God wants for our life. And not just pray out that this person is the one because that's not going to work. And the other thing that I'm going to help you understand is that it is much better to just say, God, your will, not mine. It is much better to just say, God, I want, I, I want the, the, the husband that you have created for me, the flesh of my flesh, than you choosing. So what you can do is saying, um, praying for your kingdom spouse without, without a name. And saying that the Lord will cut off any counterfeit. And believe me, I have been surprised of the people that the Lord had cut off in my life that were coming with offerings and flattering lips and all that. And yes, I have been in celibacy for one year. So, um, you know, I am the kind of person that will wait for the right guy. But at the same time, it's very important that we will spot on the counterfeits because they're going to come. And especially they're going to come with tempting 
opportunities right when the true kingdom spouse is, is about to appear or it has already appeared in your life because the devil knows that the whole purpose of your kingdom spouse is huge in your life. It is a purpose that is going to take you out of sin. It is a purpose that is going to keep you stronger. And it is a purpose that is going to take you closer to God in sanctification process. So my friends, be very serious about this. Your kingdom spouse is your assignment. It is part of your assignment to not be deceived by the strange man, the strange woman, or the counterfeit. Okay, so... Take it seriously. Don't just marry whoever is coming first with flattering lips, even if they're talking about the Lord, because there are some signs that you're going to understand that this person maybe is in idolatry or that this person maybe is lying. So be wise as a snake and harmless as a dove and learn how to recognize these signs. So one of the first things is that I want to come against the meat that you have to forever wait on the Lord for a person. Yes, there has been cases that your faith has saved and changed a man. But to be honest, um, it is the work of the Lord. And we can have faith that the Lord will do it. And if, if you're being called by the Lord, not by your heart, not by your heart desire, who is deceitful, but truly by the Lord, to wait on someone, I am not telling you to not wait. But I am going to read here in Proverbs in the chapter 13, the verse 12, what it says. So you understand that. Waiting forever for a man or for a woman is not necessarily biblical. And it says, Hope deferred make the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. So what the Lord wants from us, guys, is that the desire comes. And there is many scriptural references about it. The Lord does not want you to just be waiting because the Lord knows that the heart will, wear, will grow weary. And so we're not meant to just be um, crying around for a man that is not giving you any love, any attention that is costing you or with other people, that the kingdom spouse will have to recognize you. And yes, you can wait for a couple of months and things like that, but I really encourage you to pray for understanding and for guidance if a man is making you wait too much or a woman is making you wait too much, and especially waiting for marriage because it should be clear in the relationship that you guys both want to be married and it should be clear in the relationship that this man is going to love you as Christ loves the church and that you will be able to submit to that man. Otherwise, that might not be the one for you. And you need to be able to recognize it because counterfeits are rotting around waiting to devour you guys. So be aware of it. Let's go now to Romans in the chapter 2, the verse first, uh, sorry, the chapter first, the verse 18. And it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what might be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them in Scripture. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So there is no excuse here, my friends. We understand that the Lord has created, and we can go to Genesis, the chapter 2, the verse 24, 22 to 24. The Lord has created the female to be a companion of the man, so he's not alone. And he has created her comparable to him. So therefore, what this means is that according to the truth, your kingdom spouse is comparable to you as a female or as a man. So you guys need to have things in common and points in common where you agree. And you guys need to have points of equality or balance. So this is not to say that you guys are gonna be equal, like um, completely the same thing, but you are probably gonna be complementary. So one of you is gonna be great at this and the other one is gonna be great at that. And yes, you may have challenges and differences because the Lord is gonna come against all the things of this world. So everything that has to do with um, with vain things, like for example, um, money or you know career studies or age or appearance, um, you know all of those things that are superfluous are not going to matter. Those do not matter because those belong to the world, not to the spirit. 
But the things that matter are, is this person in idolatry? Is this person loving God? Is this person trying to follow commandments? Is this person taking you closer to God? Those are the things that matter to choose your kingdom spouse. It's not about how they look. It's not about what they earn or what. Those are things from the world. They do not, they will not make in the long run you happy. And here's the thing. Um, with no excuses, we understand that neither man, neither woman should be putting excuses to, to communication, for example. So whoever is ghosting you or blaming you and the counterfeit will use this tactic, right? They will blame you a lot. They will say, but it's because you're not doing the right thing. And this is common and we see it on Genesis, right? In the chapter three, the verse 12, when the, the woman is being blamed for sin. And yeah, she has a point of blame, but actually, they're both they're both they're both should be accountable for sin so it is not okay that the counterfeit will tell you no i'm not ready to commit because i believe that you um have like a, a mind for last and things like that you guys need to work on that together as a marriage if you're gonna get married and it's not okay to blame the other one for that okay you need to be able to really be accountable so my friends let's keep moving from here and let's move, let me see, I'm gonna to go to the third. Yeah, because let me let me read on my notes a little bit. Um, we have said that it's important that we follow what a man should be doing and a woman should be doing when they are in love by Ephesians, right? And we can see, I don't find it here, but I remember um, we can see that the commandment is that the husbands are meant to love wives as Christ loves the church. So whatever man that is not, you know, that is pointing at your flaws and your faults and is looking at, oh, you have this or you're dressed like that or you have said that or you have, you know, all of that, that's not, that does not come from love because ultimately, yes, your husband may correct you and that's important that he will correct you and that you will obey to his corrections. But at the same time, he needs to love you without excuse, without delay, with forgiveness. He, he will learn to see you without blemish, without blame. He will learn to forgive you, right? And he will learn to also not be stubborn and to not play games with you. Because a man that plays games with you is not loving you. Do you think Christ will play games with, with women? Or, uh, sorry, with the church? Or, or, or be trying to... Um, cause confusion in their mind or gaslighting them. No, Christ had not done that. Quite the opposite. Christ gave his life for, his, for, for the church. Christ sacrificed for the church and correct them with love. And he sacrificed in the most challenging way. Now, the problem here is that many people end up choosing the, the counterfeit because the counterfeit does not require that sacrifice. The counterfeit, it's, it's easy, right? It's cheaper in a way. Um, but that it's going to take you soon a little farther away from Jesus Christ. And I'm going to give you two examples, right? Um, for, for the men to sacrifice, usually your kingdom spouse will require that you develop a Christ-like character where you need to sacrifice, when you need to do something that is not comfortable for you, either because you have to move and leave that per your family or your comfort zone, or either because you have to sacrifice for a family or for, you know, in whatever way that the Lord is calling you to sacrifice and be the hero, right? And be the good man, to be godly husband. So that's going to be hard and that's going to be a challenge, but that's an indicator that that might be your kingdom spouse. If it's not easy, if it requires from you that sacrifice that comes from uprightness. And in terms of the woman, the woman needs to be submitting. And what it means to be submitting it means in many ways, right? First of all, obeying. If your husband has a request and a need, that you have to listen to that. Now, the husband needs to learn to express his need because he can expect that you will read his mind. That's not according to scripture. He needs to come and express his needs. And the woman needs to obey, needs to listen, and need to, need to really pay attention and learn from her, her man, right? And this is on Ephesians. And we also can read that... Um, in scripture, we see many times, and, and we're going to find it in my references, that if 
if the woman is not submitting and we're talking now about intimacy and we're talking about emotionally, if she's not submitting to her to his man and she's depriving the man from that nourishing, that loving attention, but also intimacy because the man requires that nourishing on intimacy. So it is a wife duty. She needs to really be mindful of the importance of sexuality in the relationship and the importance of um, how to satisfy even if you are not yet married and you're not having sexual relationships, how you can still create that bond, that emotional bond, that connection that is going to lead to romance and, and it's going to lead to later on a desire to get married and that is going to keep your men out of last because the full purpose of marriage is that you do not fall for lustful things, um, thoughts. And I have heard some people that I admire say things like, um, you know, that, that you cannot, that marriage will not help you. I call in against it with the sword of the Holy Ghost because marriage is the plan of God to keep you out of lust. So if you guys are struggling with lust, something's going on there. And I, I, I assume that there might be three things going on. The first one, that's not your kingdom spouse. If you are with your kingdom spouse, she will satisfy your soul, your body, your emotions, and your mind. You will not even have time or desire for any other woman because your woman is going to keep you happy. It's going to keep you entertained. So that's the first, first thing. If you are still lasting behind other women, that's a red flag that that is not your wife. Your wife is um, to submit to you and your wife is going to guide you out of sin by providing for you that intimacy that you need and, and completely um, rupturing all of your senses. That is in scripture too. So the other thing that can be happening is that you guys need deliverance. There is a strong attack over kingdom spouses. And we know that kingdom spouses are spouses since they were born. The chosen ones, they were together since they were born. It's not about, you know, you choosing. The Lord had already chose for you. So here's the thing. You might be committing sexual immorality by not paying attention to the desire that the Lord had put in you for your wife or for your husband. And so the strange man and the strange woman is someone that is going to tempt you with fluttering lips. It's going to tempt you with um, looks, with money. I don't know about you, but I had a lot of counterfeits coming, um, boasting about how much money or how famous they are and pretty much taking for granted I will marry them. I spotted right away that they were counterfeits. You're called to do the same. Do not be flattered by money, fame, or looks. Remember that the Lord has something even better for you and that um, that can be a strange woman or a strange man that sooner or later may leave you or might hurt you. So be wise as a snake and harmless as a dove to spot on those people and to seek for the red flags on this, okay? And so the other thing, so you, you can request for deliverance from, from the strange man and the strange woman that the Lord will deliver you and will bring only the right person to your life. Second, uh, third, sorry, the third part is that um, you might be confused. So you can ask the Lord to take the blindfold out of your eyes and to minister to you as to who is your kingdom spouse, the one that is going to satisfy all your thirst. You know, that's the world that never dries because the kingdom spouse it's, it's meant to love you, the man, as Christ loved the church, and the woman needs to love her husband as God. So we understand that kingdom spouses are a well that never dries out. And a good sexual chemistry and relationship that is nourished in romance will allow that well to not get dry. Never, ever. And that's the full purpose of the marriage, that you guys are not falling into lust. Now, the problem is that in this waiting game, um, and with these many excuses, there is there is the opportunity for the devil to creep in with a counterfeit that looks like your kingdom spouse and try to cheat you out of what is meant for you. And so what is going to happen is that um, they're going to eventually create some self-esteem issues and keep you bound to an idea that you are less than, that you are unworthy, that you are less than rubies, right? Which is what the Lord thinks about you, that you are royalty, that you are rubies. And remember, there is a um, scripture reference that it says a perfect love is cast out fear. So do not allow fear 
or fear of rejectment or any kind of fear to get in the middle between you and your kingdom spouse. Let's see. I have so many references, guys, that I get lost. Let's see here. All right. We're going to first show the chapter 4, the verse 17. And guess what? Confirmation. So it is the verse that says perfect love um, has no fear, right? So we're going to go to the chapter 4, the verse um, 17, and I'm going to read it to you. This is the consummation of love. And this is what God wants for you, okay, guys? So the idea that you have to fear rejectment or judgment or that you have to fear that your spouse is going to cheat on you or it's going to have other options, we're all going to go against it with the sword of the Holy Ghost today. So stay with me. We're coming against it, and you can pray fire over it because that's not your portion. So listen, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. That perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. So, and this is very important. We love him because he first loved us. So Jesus had loved us and have teached us what perfect love means. There is no fear. Fear of rejection? No. Fear of cheating? No. All of those are completely destroyed and dashed into pieces by the sword of the Holy Ghost. Your kingdom spouse loves you and only you. Your kingdom spouse do not reject you. Your kingdom spouse will not ghost you. Your kingdom spouse is going to come and express their love for you because that is what is commanded because you both want to stay out of sin. So well, whoever is trying to keep you bound to, to a situation that is hopeless, making your heart sad, making your heart wait for a marriage that never happens, I believe that can be a counterfeit. So open your eyes and your ears if you have them because and that's not what the Lord wants for you, especially not in these times. The Lord wants you, if you have desire, to be married so you guys can be uh, working together, um, glorify the Lord, working on your sanctification, okay? All right. Now we're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2. And it says, nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due to her. So whoever man, either if it is with you or not, is not giving you any attention, that's not your kingdom spouse. You should not wait or like believe that he's your kingdom spouse. He, he's not giving you any attention, any affection. Cut it off. It's a counterfeit. And if you believe that you have to pray more so he comes to you, that's okay. But you might des you might be deceiving yourself because your kingdom spouse have to feel affection for you. If he's not feeling affection for you, he's not the one. He's not. Because he's one flesh with you. So he will feel something about you, you know. And he might be confused. He might be, you know, entangled with witchcraft, spell bindings, and things like that with a strange woman. That can happen. So you have to pray against the strange woman or the strange man. If your kingdom spouse is being like, you know, tempted by someone else, you can pray fire against that. But if that person is not giving you attention or affection, um, I, um, I, uh, I, I doubt it that that's your kingdom spouse. Uh, pray fire, pray fire against any interferences and see what happens and see if something changes. There should be progress. Yes, you can wait. You can wait for, for months and, and all you want, but there should be some progress. If there is no progress, that's an indicator that's not the person for you, okay? All right, and it says, The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you might give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Okay, guys, so here's why it's so important that you know the word because you are not meant to be deprived from, from intimacy and sexuality. Your kingdom spouse should identify you, recognize you, and should fight for you, and you should fight for your kingdom spouse in prayer. 
not in terms of pursuing, especially the women are not meant to pursue the men, but are meant to, you know, give the men some hints to tell, hey, I like you, I'm interested. But then, you know, what God wants for you guys is that you guys get to be married and get to be together and not deprive each other. Because if you're waiting for years and waiting for this man to change and come to the Lord and love you, you guys are depriving each other. So that's not biblical. That's not what the Lord wants. All right? Okay. Now, it is true that it's also saying here, um, if a woman has a husband who does not believe, if he's willing to live with her, let her not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children will be unclean, but now they are, uh, they are holy. So yes, we're talking about yes, um, sanctifying or unbelieving husbands or wife. But here's the thing, guys. Listen to this. It says, if he's willing to live with her, okay? So he needs to be willing to be with you and live with you. If he's just making you wait and he's an unbeliever or she's an unbeliever making you wait and, and you guys are not trying to live together and you can be married, you know, as kingdom spouses in the heavens or you can be married physically, but if you but you guys need to be living together for this verse to actually take place. Otherwise, you are twisting scripture. The scripture is saying here that the person, the, the husband, should be willing to live with the wife. So if he's looking to the other side and you're praying forever for an unbeliever man, that is not biblical. Let me tell you that. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I love you guys. That's why I'm doing this. I want you guys to be set free from the counterfeit because the counterfeit knows how important kingdom marriages are. And they're out for blood. You know, they're trying to confuse chosen ones. Because also, also guys, chosen ones, the kingdom spouse are mostly chosen ones. Many of them are called to ministry. Many of them are called to speak in behalf of the Lord in public places. And imagine that, how many souls will be saved, staying out of sin, um, out of love, not because we fear hell, but because we love Jesus Christ. And can you imagine like how, how many people can be saved when these kingdom spouse come together to glorify God, to give an example of what it means, sacred family, what it means, what the Lord wants for us. The promise is beautiful. It's wonderful. The devil does not want that. It's bad publicity for the devil, right? To, to, to have the kingdom spouses separated. But it's in scripture also that we should not fear the prophets, the, the conspira conspiracy against us. So any conspirators that are trying to conspire against the Lord and against the kingdom marriages, we're coming against them with the sword of the Holy Ghost and we're saying, no, we conform it against our marriage shall prosper. Period. And I'm not talking about physical marriages. I'm talking about the promise, the kingdom spouse marriages. All right, guys, let's keep moving. Yeah, so let's go now to seven. This is one of my faiths. The Song of Solomon, if you want to learn about what the Lord thinks about how, um, how to, you know, this is like pre-marriage stage, and this is what should be going on with a true kingdom spouse sooner or later. I'm not telling you that you're going to meet and like, Instantly, you're like all in love and all in fire and all in the Song of Solomon. Get, get, give your men or your woman some chance, you know, get to know each other, get to understand, get to understand what's going on, why you feel what you feel. But the true kingdom spouse should be, in, should be stirring these feelings on you. And this is what it, um, the Lord has meant for when it is your beloved, when it is the true one, this is what you're going to feel. So I'm coming against the jealousy and I'm coming against the idea that there is any replacement for your spouse with the sword of the Holy Ghost. Listen, chapter 2, verse 16, it says, My beloved is mine and I am his. his feed, he feeds his flock among the lilies. So my beloved is mine and I am his. You guys belong to each other. No woman, no strange woman, no strange man can't divide that because the Lord has said, whatever has been united in heaven, let no man divide. In heaven, not necessarily that you're already, made, uh, you're already married, but this is the one flesh that God had created for you since the beginning. 
since you were born, the Lord had this person for you. So you are already each other's. There is no other person. That's in your mind. That's a deception. Don't let the devil cheat you out of that. And that person is going to steer your passion like no one. Why? Because that's the whole purpose. The Lord had made that person in a way that it will please you in all possible ways. It's perfect for you. Handmade for you, right? So, it says, uh, in the chapter 3, the verse first, By night on my bed I sought the one I love. I sought him, but I did not find him. I will rise now, I said, and go about the city in the streets and in the squares. I will seek the one I love. I sought him, but I did not find him. The watchmen who go about the city found me. I said, have you seen the one I love? He's talking about looking for your husband, right? Looking, not just staying in passivity. Scarcely had I passed by them when I found the one I love. I held him and will not let him go. So this is the other thing. When I found the one I love, I held him and I will not let him go. Until I have brought him to the house of my mother and into the chamber of her who conceived me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or by the doors of the field, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. So here are two very important things for you guys, both men and women. If you have found someone that, that awakens, that, that really pleases you, that steers your desire, that you feel, wow, this person, I can't stop thinking about them. I like them a lot. They have all the right words. They, they follow God. They are, they are the one for me in many ways. Don't let them go. You, you're not, the whole Twin Flames idea of let them go. No, don't let them go. Fight for them. Fight. That's not, that's unbiblical. The, the idea of letting them go for, that's unbiblical. If that person is not giving you affection, then it's not pleasing you, right? In that case, you can let them go. <laughs> but if that person is giving you some affection and you are interested, you are both reciprocating, then don't let each other go. Now, that person needs to please you before awakening love. So what means is that if you are chasing a man, or chasing a woman that is not satisfying all your senses, that is not, you know, and not your senses, sorry, because that comes from the flesh. It's not satisfying your soul, your, your call, your seek, your desire to be completely off from last. If that person is not the companion that you need, that is going to give you strength, that is going to pray for you, that is going to nourish you emotionally, sexually, and, and physically, in, in terms of food and nourishing, then that's not for you. That's not going to please you. So do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. And same with the men. The men, your men, needs to be like, like, like Solomon, needs to make you feel beautiful, gorgeous, not ignore you. If a man is ghosting you, that's not your man. That's not. And if you believe that is your man and the Lord had told you that is your man and you have dreams and things like that, then pray that he will be like, like, like Christ and he will love you correctly because you don't, you're not meant to be crying out, waiting forever for a man that is not rendering you affection. Just say, right? So teach, teach your husband, teach your husband that you're not just to be treated lightly, that you're not to be ignored, that you're not to be, no, your husband should be rendering you affection and you should be submitting to him in all possible ways. That's a true, true relationship from the Lord. That's how you're going to recognize it. And so in the chapter five, the verse six, it says, I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had turned away and has and was gone, right? My heart leaped up when he spoke. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. The watchmen who went about the city found me. They struck me. They wounded me. The keepers of the wall took my bill away from me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him I am lovesick. So, if we are one for the other, if your beloved is yours and you are your beloved, it is only fair that you guys need to be in communication. 
that you guys need to be taking care of that love because it's precious. It's more precious than gold. So that is very important that, that you, if you're a man, understand that you can get your beloved love sick if you don't talk with her, if you don't give her affection. So she will be, eventually, she will have legal rights to leave you if you're doing that. And at the same time, because that it's abandonment, at the same time, for and, and I'm not talking about you know physical marriage, but I'm talking about the, the kingdom spouse promise, because the kingdom spouse promise involves communication and involves affection. And if that's not there, that's a red flag that you may have to leave that relationship. So my friends, let's go now to the chapter six, the verse four. Okay, verse four, it says, um, this is, the, the praise of the Shulamit's beauty. So that's how a man should treat you. It says, Oh my love, you are as beautiful as Tirsa, lovely as Jerusalem, awesome as an army with banners. That's funny. <laughs> it says, Turn your eyes away from me, for they have overcome me. Your hair is like a flock of goats. Okay, there he, he gets really funny. I, I encourage you to not read it. But the point here, let's go now all the way to the... Um, Chapter 6, verse 8, because this is what your man is going to think about you and what true kingdom spouses will feel for their loved ones. So it says, there are 60 queens and 80 concubines and virgins without number. My dove, my perfect one, is the only one. So you are the only one. And even if there is strange men or strange women, whoever around it, and this goes either for men or for women, at the end of the day, pray using the Song of Solomon with the sword of the Holy Ghost against any strange man or a strange woman because the Lord has created us in a way that you are the only one. And there can be thousands of people trying to gain the affection of your love, you know, trying to bring them flowers or money or whatever to buy their love and to get them married to marry you. But you are the only one for your dog. You are the only one. Period. It is written. So it says here, in the chapter 8, the verse 6, Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death, jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire, a most vehement flame. So guys, if there is no communication, if we're not treating each other like we are the only one with devotion, with that strong submission, devotion, and sacrificial love, then we're going to get love sick. And, and jealousy can even kill us, you know, can get us sick. And that is because we're not coming against the strange women and the strange men with the sword of the Holy Ghost. And we're not following what, what God has said how love should be. So I encourage you to seek in in scripture how you're gonna have to be as a lover to really keep the flame in your relationship so you don't get love sick and so you don't give your wife or your husband in the spirit legal rights to claim that you have abandoned them to claim that you are in sexual immorality because that is a law that sexual immorality it's um it's a ground for divorce. 